Hello, and welcome to Hawaii News for You, unless you're a channel hopper, in which case, goodbye. <laughs> in the news this week, at London Zoo, there are calls for the resignation of the architect who designed the Elephant House. <laughs> During an inspection of the Iraqi Imperial Guard, one soldier regrets daydreaming about Melinda Messenger. And London Transport finds a foolproof way to reduce overcrowding on buses. <laughs> on Ian Hislop's team is a broadcaster who's been told he won't win the Labour Party nomination for Lord Mayor because he sends his children to a private school in North London, although that does make him an ideal candidate for party leader, Trevor Phillips. <laughs> And with Paul Merton tonight is a comedian who launched his career at the Glastonbury Festival, performing to a crowd of 20,000 people, or the queue for the toilets as it's known, <laughs> Bill Bailey. <laughs> so, round one, and hello again to Channel Hoppers, and goodbye. <laughs> Paul and Bill, mm -hmm. your mission? That could be its bagpipes, yep. <laughs> Donald Dewar. A bad publicity stunt. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, the, there's the king. <laughs> <laughs> the king of Scotland. Uh, the running on the I live in Marbella wife slapping ticket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not strictly speaking true, no. of course. Doesn't so live in Marbella allegedly. anymore. No. <laughs> Where man. does he live? In the Bahamas. Right. I am 116th Scottish myself, actually. Really? Yes. I feel a great kinship with uh, Sean Connery, actually. I'd He's like not very be... Scottish, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's going bald. Well, we, we both come from the Bahamas, don't we? No. <laughs> <laughs> what did uh, Connery call New Labour? Do you know his term for them? Uh, new Schleber. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I could do that. I could no, no, do an impression of Sean Connery. <laughs> No, I, w I wouldn't put it that strongly. You <laughs> <laughs> come and uh, criticise my impression. <laughs> I think he does a very good Jimmy Summerwell. <laughs> I've got a new one, actually. What's that? I've got the boy who advertises BBC children's television. <laughs> This is, yes, the uh, SNP's attempt to boost their waning election hopes by uh, calling on Sean Connery, the famous 007, so-called because of the number of times he's visited Scotland. <laughs> uh, amid all the media hype surrounding Sean Connery's arrival in Scotland, politicians in Wales are desperately concerned as to whether the Welsh national elections are going to be overlooked. Ian and Trevor, your question? <laughs> Now, uh, in its fifth week, there are the Apache helicopters going in. Mm. Oh, there's a couple of homely mass murderers. Yeah. Ah, and that's a delegation of Who men is in that? men in coats. It's Charlie Wilson, <laughs> isn't it? I don't know. Who is that? I don't know. I don't know. It's somebody. Jim probably... Davidson. Yeah. Oh, it's Jim Davidson. Oh, he's going to go give uh, Slobber some advice, I suppose. He's been over to it to entertain the troops. Mm. Really? Gosh, mm. things are bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think he's being used as a subhuman shield. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's King Tony, isn't it? The mm. Americans have decided Blair is the man. They, they, lo they love him. I mean, Cl Clinton's actually, I think, been a bit unsettled because uh, he got this 11th commandment from God which said, Thou shalt not comfort thy rod with thy staff. And I think he's still a bit... <laughs> So what's Clinton and Blair's new plan that they've come up with this week? It's well, a bit like the old plan. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Except it's this week rather than last week. <laughs> the plan is not to use ground troops, because that might work. Right. Um, so it's to carry on bombing, because that doesn't. <laughs> it's a cunning plan. <laughs> <laughs> They're uh, starting an oil, oil blockade. Uh, yes. That's the idea. They've got a stop and search policy now. No, this is another policy that instead of standing in troops, you're going to stop the oil getting through. Except the Russians, because mm. that would create trouble. Mm. So that can go through. The problem with this stop and search policy is that, you know, I hear that they're going to send Metropolitan Police and they haven't seen any black people to stop yet in the <laughs> Adriatic. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, 
everybody's getting through. Mm. Nice did you, idea. Did then. you drive here tonight? <laughs> so I wouldn't drive back. <laughs> This is the uh, continuing war in the Balkans. The uh, increasingly hawkish mood of NATO has angered President Yeltsin, who told the Western leaders, you want to bring in ground troops, you want simply to seize Yugoslavia. We cannot let that happen. Luckily, his wife dragged him away, screaming, leave it, Boris, they're not worth it. <laughs> Paul and Bill, uh, watch carefully. I'll be asking questions later. Chris Woodhead. Oh, please, sir, can I go to bed with you? <laughs> As Prince Charles said, the pencil's rather large for me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a don't stand so close to me, young teacher, the victim of schoolgirl fantasy. She wants him, <laughs> but he's got to do geography marking. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't Prince Charles or something come, you supported him or something, he came out in favour of... Wrote him a letter, of, yeah. Uh... Yeah, Prince Charles can always spot a complete bummer in the campaign, <laughs> can't he? <laughs> mm. Yes, he's actually invited him to have dinner with him and Camilla. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, As if nice he wasn't in enough shit already, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so how did the story come about? How did it all blow up, as it were? Chris Woodhead stuff. Oh, well, originally it was his mm. wife, was it? His ex-wife who mm. um, claimed that he had been having an affair with a, a schoolgirl while she was still at school. And he said, oh, I know, it was after she left school. About a quarter of an hour after. Yeah. She left. <laughs> <laughs> so David Blunkett, um, he's come out in support of him and then Prince Charles said, oh, I think Chris Woodhead does a fantastic job. And uh, why might he go to prison if the allegation is true? Well, I mean, he comes from I mean, the royal family over the... Oh, oh uh, Woodhead. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that Prince Philip, his brother-in-law, was a high-ranking uh, Nazi. He worked on... Um, uh, no, who was it? It was... Gore, uh, no, it was um, Himmler's personal staff. Yeah, it's in the Kitty Kelly book, The Royals. It's, it's nothing it's, short of a national scandal. Absolutely. Let's get rid of him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Start now. Yeah. Honk your horn every time you go past Buckingham Palace and, and then the crescendo will build and we'll see him swinging on a gibbet. <laughs> I think you've got to be careful about, yes, yes. The, um, about the, the truth of the Kitty Kelly book. It's in the acknowledgements, there's credit to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my ass sued in court, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, yes, it is the news that uh, Prince Charles has uh, waded in to defend the uh, besieged uh, Chris Woodhead, the Chief Inspector of Schools, uh, who was accused of having had an affair in the 70s uh, with a sixth form pupil. His wife first became suspicious after he asked her to sew leather patches on the knees of his trousers. <laughs> uh, and finally, Ian and Trevor. Ah, the large white dome. <laughs> Completely empty. Lily came out and mm. said that we're caring. You know, we love the public services. And that Thatcher, she was evil. Yeah. I said, and my, you know, Lily said, I thought it all along. I thought it all along, <laughs> but I just, you know. Didn't mention it. Didn't mention it, you know. I didn't Ian Hager it. in the cabinet, but, you know, it slipped their mind. Yeah. They're for public education and, um, and for spending more on the health service. And they always have been since yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and today they're not. Because Thatcher turned up. <laughs> sort of mad bat came and stabbed them. It, it was funny, you know, he, he said, there shall be no sacred cows. <laughs> and, and there she was. <laughs> It is the Tory split, uh, caused by uh, Peter Lilly's so-called anti-Thatcher speech. Uh, this split has uh, spoilt the Tory relaunch, for which Haig was apparently told by image consultants, wear the sort of clothes you'd expect a successful Conservative leader to wear. <laughs> so he turned up the next day in a blue dress carrying a handbag. <laughs> So the end of round one brings an end to the point scoring for Ian's team tonight, each side having four.
So welcome to round two, as indeed anyone is uh, this week, in an effort to uh, reach out to regional viewers, a round solely dedicated to the recognition of buildings in London. As featured uh, here on our silhouetteometer, uh, Trevor, our uh, token Lord Mayor candidate tonight, is first up. So let's watch the board as we go round the houses. <laughs> This is the proposed um, assembly building built by Norman Foster. We can reveal it now, you got it right. Yeah. Yes, you are absolutely oh, lovely. Right. Oh. There, there is a bit of a problem with this building though, because um, Foster obviously designed it before the survey came out that said a fifth of all British workers are bonking on their desks all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, first thing I'm going to do is Lord Mayor. I mean, you, know, you can't stop bonking, but put in some curtains. <laughs> It looks like one of those machines you get in chip shops that kill insects. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's your yeah. office, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I, the whole thing's not my office. Just that top floor there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and... It's going uh, to have lots of curtains around it. And when... when um, <laughs> and why might it not be the Mayor of London's offices? Well, Trevor might not win. I don't know if he's <laughs> well, to him. No, no. No, that's not. That's not allowed. I can see Red Ken there in the drawing. <laughs> Just on the top floor. Well, so you have to have somebody to operate the lifts, OK? <laughs> <laughs> That's Geoffrey Archer, surely. <laughs> no, in fact, it's that the government have no right to tell the Mayor of London where to put his offices, so you don't have to necessarily go along with those plans. So oh, you right. could stand up to Tony and say, no, Tony. <laughs> Imagine we it, Trevor. <laughs> Uh, Bill, your um, turn to put a name to a shape. <laughs> uh, this is uh, one of these new uh, stealth buildings, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> that's right. Some kind of uh, like a car park uh, stroke uh, a polytechnic um, university uh, toilet. Uh, <laughs> Is it the MI5 building? You're very close, yes. It is, in fact, the MI6 building. Well, I knew it in the old days. That's next door. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, why has it been in the news? Are they going to repaint it? Sort of changing rooms special. <laughs> 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 they have stopped uh, the Bond film using it as a backdrop uh, for a boat chase. Will you ever get the boats in and out of the corridors? <laughs> <laughs> The reason that they banned it was that it might give away the location of uh, one of the most distinctive landmarks in London. <laughs> <laughs> it was Robin Cook who lifted the ban, in fact. Uh, well, saying it was a bit silly. He said, after all James Bond has done for Britain, it was the least I could do for Bond. <laughs> he, he doesn't exist, Robin. <laughs> <isn't he? laughs> Ian, it's uh, your chance to pitch your wits against our silhouetteometer. Well, that's the House of Parliament with a bit added on to it. Mm -hmm. is, is this the, um, the eight zillion pound new building that MPs have voted through as their new offices? Yes, it's called a portcullis <laughs> house. And uh, how much does it cost? It costs 88 million billion. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is actually the most expensive office block per user ever built in the UK. Uh, and they spent uh, 1.2 million pounds per MP that's going to use it. Oh no. And the plants in the courtyard alone cost 200,000 pounds. <laughs> How um, much do the secretaries cost? <laughs> slightly cheaper. Where are, um, they getting, <laughs> where are they getting their plants for 200,000 pounds? <laughs> Columbia, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you too have a peculiar shape. Thank you. <laughs> it's a stump of a tree, isn't it? Uh, um, that's been eaten ready brick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. Can we can tear it? away the silhouette and yes. have a look at it. That might help. It's Richard Curtis's house. house. He right. used it in the Notting Hill Gate, the new film, and uh, he's coincidentally selling his house. And the hope is, uh, I don't know if it's the hope, but he might uh, get an extra windfall because people say, oh, I want to buy that house that appears in uh, Notting Hill Gate. And he wrote the film, so it would be that he's trying this as a way to sell his house. 
Yes. Uh, and what happens there in the film? Let me see. Uh, that's where Hugh Grant lives. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this film? I have seen this Is film. Is it good? Right, are you really the only good. person Yes, oh, a fantastic film. Well, why are you asking us what happens in a film which only you have seen? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, let's kill him. Yeah. <laughs> I smell blood. <laughs> I mean, we asked the question, so what was Liz Hurley's dress like? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. This is what they, did she look a right old slapper? <laughs> I don't remember actually seeing it, to be honest, what? until I saw it in the papers the next day. Were you not there then? Uh, yes, but I wasn't staring at her dress. Why not? You mean... <laughs> <laughs> Are you Should coming I out? <laughs> No. Something happens uh, in the house that made it even more valuable, which is that... You uh, went there for dinner. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have. Uh, Hugh uh, actually sh shags Julia. That's, that's where the sex scene takes place in the house. So. Oh, good. Well, we wouldn't know that because we haven't seen it. No. <laughs> Spoil the film for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Hugh obviously didn't read about this. Wore flesh-coloured thongs for the scene. Cause... What colour were these flesh-coloured thongs? <laughs> <laughs> it could be a racist remark. <laughs> Colour of Hugh's flesh. Oh, a Hugh's flesh. <laughs> <laughs> you know him well, dear. You? <laughs> you played football with him. Oh, you played football with him. Seen him in the showers. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you are coming out then. <laughs> Uh, there was a burning issue of the day that was reopened by uh, Julia Roberts' appearance. Uh, hair underneath the arms. In Britain, it seems to be an unpopular thing, but in the, con the continent, uh, you know, women just wear hair under their arms. It's there. It's been nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they sometimes they plait it uh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> weave it into a kind of a little basket. Yeah. <laughs> Where you can carry apples and sundry goods. Yeah. No. <laughs> you can tune it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we can actually see uh, a picture. There we are. Ah. Uh, Julia's. Well, that's all right. What's wrong with that? Oh. That's not hair, though, is it? That's a tiny little vole. She's mm. trained. <laughs> <laughs> to squat very, very still. Yeah. <laughs> but there's another reason why property prices are soaring. Um, which in Notting Hill. Yeah, yeah, in that uh, Peter Mandelton is moving out. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> or who was your best man, of course, wasn't he, Trevor? I, I think this uh, business about me and man, it's all envy, actually, you know. Because I'm the only person in public life who's ever shared a room with Peter Mandelson. <laughs> I think people are tremendously envious. People keep asking me, what, you know, what's he like? So what's he like? <laughs> Charming. Got hair under his arms. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and you never see him and Julia at the same time, do you? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm guessing that Peter Mandelson starred in Pretty, starred in pretty Woman. <laughs> Don't go there. It is Hugh Grant's house, as featured in uh, the new film Notting Hill, uh, which premiered this week. Uh, at the party, Liz Hurley upstaged everyone by arriving, according to one fashion designer, uh, in a low-cut, see-through, backless outfit, split open to the waist. <laughs> Surely stark naked is a simpler way to say. <laughs> Chatting uh, about romance, Hugh Grant described how his libido dramatically increased when he was outside England. As soon as I go to Paris or Italy, I become a different man. Uh, presumably in case he has to give his name and address. <laughs> <to the device. laughs> So, uh, as that round subsides, a quick survey of the scores shows that uh, Paul and Bill are in need of a little underpinning. Behind as they are, 10 8. Right, round three offers the prospect, however bleak, of our of one out round. Paul, Ken Livingston, Jerry Adams, Sam DL, and Lucy the Labrador. Is it about disgracing yourself or themselves in the House of Commons? Because Lucy the dog, uh, she was ill recently, wasn't she? I think Edward Heath was making a speech, and Lucy the dog suddenly threw up <laughs> in his ear. <laughs> Willits. Beg your pardon? David Willits. David Willits was making, oh, yes. two brains, was making a speech, and um, she threw up, and I think it's about misbehaviour in the House of Commons. 
I think Tam Dale, Dale and Ken Livingston have both sort of like been banned for, you know, a couple of weeks for unparliamentary language or whatever they call it. And Jerry Adams has never been in the House of Commons, he's, um, I don't think, although he did win a seat in Belfast, I think, a couple of years ago. So I think he's the odd one out because all the others have been naughty in the House of Commons, apart from him. Is the right answer. Hey. <laughs> Jerry Adams has recently been criticised for appearing on the after-dinner circuit where he gets the audience going with his favourite joke, uh, you've got two minutes to clear the building. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, your gruesome choice uh, yes. is between Walt Disney, Walt Disney. Margaret Thatcher, Ugh. Benny and Bjorn <laughs> ah, and Ikea. Oh, lovely beardies there. Walt Disney has had his head frozen yeah. in uh, cryogenically. Yeah. So in the mistaken belief, I believe that one day the medical science will be able to fit his head onto the body. I think they should uh, put on a giant duck for a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thatcher obviously has uh, been frozen already. And uh, what we're seeing is this robot legs and Davros on the top. <laughs> That's Bobby Davros. Bobby Davros, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, IKEA make the freezers. Uh, flat pack, self assembly, cryogenic units. <laughs> yeah. And these two are just harmless bearded songwriters. Yeah. <laughs> Walt Disney hated men with beards. He wouldn't let any of them work in his thing. Thatcher said, I That's won't right. have beardies in the cabinet. Yes. Right. One, you know, sometimes she was right. Um, <laughs> Ikea, you're not allowed to have a beard. They said we're not having members of the public with beards in here. Yeah. Because I've they got, sort of... I've been in there. Yeah. Well, you well, got through. Yeah. Uh, no, it was in Bristol. Wasn't it? it was in. one of the big Ikea stores. It was in Bristol. And those guys have got beards. Is the right answer. Yeah. Mm. Very, very good. Uh, Baroness Thatcher wouldn't allow any of her ministers to sport beards, uh, presumably because she didn't like the prickly sensation on her ass during cabinet meetings. <laughs> <laughs> In 1969, a respected Australian uh, psychiatrist, Dr Nigel Parker, said, Gentlemen who wear facial hair are generally obsessive, psychopathic, impotent, or have some other sexual problem. <laughs> uh, Ian, your assorted fruits are uh, Sinead O'Connor, Slobodan Milosevic, Lily Langtree, and John Gummer. Uh, mm. Sinead O'Connor's become a priestess. She's just been ordained. Um, and she's now known as Sister Bernadette of Our Ladies of the Loonies. <laughs> Slobodan Milosevic, I don't imagine he's been called to the priesthood. Gummer was going to be a priest. He was um, on the Synod, the Church of England. And Lily Langtree was best known for being um, the Prince of Wales's mistress. And I don't think they had women priests then. They're all priests except all three of them except Sinead O'Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Only one of them smokes. <laughs> In the hope that he might kill some more people by passive smoking. <laughs> um, the answer is that all their fathers were clergymen, uh, except Sinead O'Connor, who claims this week that she became a priest and adopted the name uh, Mother Bernadette Mary O'Connor. Uh, so that's the name that you should now be looking for in the HMV monster sale bargain bin. <laughs> and uh, finally in this round, Trevor, uh, Lord Hailsham, the Queen Mother, Michael Benteen, and you. It must be something to do with you. What have you ever done with the Queen Mother or Lord Hailsham? <laughs> um, I danced with the Queen Mother. OK, OK, I'm going to come out. Ah, uh, yes, that's it. I yeah. danced with the Queen Mother. Right. And uh, she danced in the blue flame and she's now immortal. <laughs> she danced uh, with Lord Helsham sometime in 1868. Yeah. <laughs> he's drinking blood. He's drinking blood, look. Blood of a virgin. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hailsham did, yeah. danced with Queen Mother. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Benteen, Benteen did. She's the old one out because she doesn't dance to herself. Doesn't dance to herself. Is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> It was great, you know, because she, she said to me, um, I was a student at the time, she said, mm. um, you're a Marxist, aren't you? And I said, yeah. And he said, Marx, what a romantic fool. <laughs> <laughs> so you reckon you're in there? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dance was it? 
disco dance? Close. It's the hokey cokey. You put your yeah. left hip in, you put your left hip <laughs> in. In, out, in, out, get another one put in. <laughs> The, uh, the Queen Mother apparently is very good at getting people to dance. According to royal biographer Elizabeth Longford, uh, quite recently at Royal Lodge, she persuaded uh, Lord Hailsham to throw away his sticks and join her in a Welsh jig. Uh, well, she jigged, he lay on the floor trying to get his sticks back. <laughs> <laughs> For which, uh, singing and dancing uh, brings us tripping to the end of this stage uh, with Paul and Bill in need of a ball change, uh, trailing as they are 15-10. Missing words is how we bring this show to a climactic whimper, an unhealthy dose of ill-formed headlines, including one or fewer from this week's guest publication, the always reliable Elevator World. <laughs> uh, the world's foremost elevator publication. Oh. So, eyes down, look in on. A third of us uh, don't know what? Don't know the half of it. <laughs> What the other three quarters are doing. Yeah. Other three quarters? <laughs> uh, it was a joke. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> it was good, yeah. Well, that's right, isn't it? <laughs> it's actually no. a third of us don't know who lives next door, uh, is the answer. Uh, next two ton rhino makes what? Ceramic cup in night school. <laughs> <laughs> Edward Heath's eyes water. <laughs> uh, makes little impression on Volvo Estate, is the answer. What? This is uh, a five-year-old rhino uh, who clambered onto the bonnet and edged his forelegs towards the windscreen. Uh, but when the lights were green, they just paid him a quid and he went away. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, I found it at what.com. Anoraksearch.com. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Get no. a life dot nerdy web <laughs> <laughs> dot com. Definitely. Uh, none of these things. It is in fact elevatorworld dot com. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and lastly, Thank what you. all the rage in Pompeii? Lava. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie Howard. Frankie Howard. Indoor barbecues. Yeah. Um. Uh, the answer is in Lifts. fact lift. It's not from Elevator World. Oh. <laughs> uh, DIY is all the rage, or was all the rage in Pompeii, which, uh, incoherent rambling, uh, means that at the end of tonight's rubber, this week's uh, pair of jokers are Paul and Bill with 11, whilst this week's uh, leaders of the pack are Ian and Trevor with 16. And I leave you with news that in a primary school in Ribble Valley, there's evidence that slower pupils are benefiting from smaller classes. <laughs> Uh, Gordon Brown explains to an elderly couple that his new inheritance tax laws will leave their offspring with virtually nothing. <laughs> and at a Maidenhead Comprehensive, dinner lady Mary Smith strongly denies that there's any adverse effects to eating beef on the bone. <laughs> Good night. Later tonight, Jules Holland invites a top lineup of musos, including Skunk Anansi and Robert Palmer. BBC Two, 11.20.